Hi everyone, welcome in. My name is Liesl from Artist Palette and we are doing the lovely morning glow painting here. So I'm going to go over my supplies, get yourselves comfortable, situated, and uh, we'll get started. You can pause and take your time throughout this video so you don't have to keep up with me. Um, the pause option is there so that you can go at your own pace. Um, so what I have is white, blue, and I am, I always use my primary color, so I have it on a separate messy palette, uh, black, yellow, and red, typical colors, so the blue and the, and the white. This is my separate mixing palette to mix the colors, but as an option for some of the more magenta violet colors that you see down here, you can have actual magenta and a violet. So you can have it already pre-mixed instead of having to make your own colors all the time. And if you prefer mixed colors, pre-mixed colors, that's an option. So this is kind of what it looks like. It's just a deep violet and a light magenta. If you don't have these, don't worry. You can still make these colors. You can still very much make do with um, mixing with your primaries and your black and white. So let's get started. Um, let me just, sorry, I forgot to tell you about my brushes. I got a large brush here, and I always do this because it's soft. I like to use softer brushes for the acrylic. You can also use a flat brush here. So any large brush can be flat and or round, whatever you prefer. Then I have this medium flat brush, this number four, it's a bright. These are really good for making the trees and Honestly, having a ruler for making perfectly straight lines like that is even better. So you don't really have to rely on your hand. You can just change the angle slightly to your liking and just make that dark line. Then I have a detailed brush. This is a number four. You can use something smaller. These are good for small little details that you might need to do later. I like to use my flat brushes for the details of the um, the leaves on the tree and you can also use other brushes to do similar things you can use the tip of wider brushes thinner like a, a fan brush and you can also use a napkin you can use some of your napkin to kind of get little details like just by dabbing around here and there water cup on the side and let's get started. So I am going to start with my very light color at the bottom. We want to start light, we don't want to start dark. So we're going to take a nice big scoop of white and a little touch of yellow. So mostly white and a little touch of yellow. See how bright it is? It's super, super light compared to just the yellow on the side and tiny touch of water, just a little tiny touch. We know that when we look at our, when we look at the original, it starts a little bit lower. So it's the halfway points kind of up here. It's kind of ending around there. So I'm going to just sort of mimic the shape of my hills, the mountains, I mean, for now. So I'm gonna mimic that shape. Just go straight across and then we're going to switch, we're going to go up a little bit, but then we're going to switch our color to give it more of a deeper sunsetty glow. We're not going to wash off our brush. We don't really need to. So from here, we're just going to add in a little bit more of the actual yellow. So now we're just getting darker. So I'll take another piece size or two, and then we're just going to take a little, like just a little bit of red. That's actually, I'm going to start with a little bit less than that. You just a tiny touch, mix that in. You start getting a little bit of a orangey kind of craft dinner cheese color. But I do want it to be a bit more on the yellow side. So I'm gonna add a bit more yellow. This is a nice golden color. And I'm gonna start above here. I'm gonna see how that looks. So I'm gonna start above where we just put our very light yellow. Back and forth, you can use a small touch of water again and just drag it down into your previous color. Just go back and forth, bring it down, and it just picks up the color and it blends. 
Look at that, starting to make a glow already. Perfect. And I still don't have to wash off this brush because we're just going to go into like a, a pink salmon, which is built off of this color. So I'm gonna take a little bit more red, take the extra red here. So now it's like you're, you're just adding a bit more red. Just a small touch of water. If you are running out of paint, you just have to add a little bit more of your paint. So a little bit of that red, touch of yellow, and maybe a small piece size of white. We don't wanna go ultra, ultra light, then it starts looking very peachy. We can go above this and drag it down and let it blend into that previous color. So just add a little bit more red and white if you need to, if you want more pink. Okay, and just very lightly now, press really light into your previous colors. You can get it blending in there a little bit more. And I have good solid color going back and forth. You can also start um, from this point, you can start going down a little bit on an angle. So you can have this kind of coming up more and you can change the direction. Since you can have more of a V shape as if straight across. If you want to change that, you can start doing that. But I like the straight across. It's, it really is your preference if you like to do more of a swooping kind of motion. So I'm gonna wash this off. I'm gonna wash it off and dry it. And this, since it's been drying for like, you know, a minute or two, I'm just gonna dry it really well. I don't want too much water on my brush. Before I go up into the darker colors, like the magenta looking color, the hot pink and the purple, I like to just go over this section one last time because second coats really make it look a bit more solid. So if you take plain white and just go right at the bottom here, you can go right into below where your, your mountains and hills are gonna sit. That's always better to be safe that way. And then very lightly brush it upwards and just keep going up. And you can just get that nice, if you wanna start doing that curved motion, you can get that curved motion going and it just smooths it out even more. Bring it up a bit closer. So I'm just, it's down here, you can barely see it, but don't worry. Um, as I get to darker colors, you're gonna see it a little bit better too. Somewhere down here, very, very light. And if you want to, you can go back into your golden color if you wanna put a bit more of a golden look. Bring it down a bit more. Those are options. Okay, so once again, I'm washing this off. Whenever you're ready, we're going to start with that magenta. So I'm gonna show you, you can just take the magenta if you wanna make more of a magenta color yourself. Really from the same spot, I just take a big scoop of red and a little bit of my white. So I stay more in the hot pink area. And when it's touching a little bit of that orange, you get that cool magenta color. See, something like that. So that's right in the same spot. I mean, there wasn't a lot of paint here. So you have a lot of orange. You don't want it touching all of it. You only want it touching um, a small pea size or less. And uh, you can, you can always just make a hot pink and add in a touch of that orange or that salmon we just made. So again, I'm starting up here. We don't want too much water on our brush. If you have it really watery, it makes it look very, very streaky. Well, here I can also take the magenta that I had on the side. Be careful how low you go with this color. Sometimes I have to wash off my brush if I accidentally pick up a bit too much of my paint colors from the orange and all that kind of thing. Wash it off. 
squeezing out the extra water. And I'm going to take more of my magenta color. I'm doing a slight swooping. See how it's slightly curved? Just changing it so it's not all straight across. Going up and up and up. I like to go pretty much to the top. Take whatever hot pink or magenta color. If you have a premixed. And then we're gonna put purple over top of this because layering is good. We don't need to leave it white. We can just go across and this will help it um, get to more of a purpley color. And when I'm up here, if you, you have to be careful that you don't have, if you have a lot of orange into your, your pink, you don't want it to clash with your purple when you put it over top. So when you're getting up here, what could help is if you just go to, if you're not using a premixed magenta, you can go to red, a little bit of white, you know, that hot pink. And then you can take the tiniest dot of blue. You have to be super careful. See how it just, it's barely, you can barely see it on this brush. And um, this will also mimic the, a different type of magenta color that's going to help go into the purple. So you can do something like that. But um, I like, you know, the other magenta I made too. That's really nice. You just have to be super, super careful that you're not putting too much orange because purple and orange make brown and it's mostly supposed to be red, some white to give it a hot pink and just a touch of orange. Or if you want to go more on the purpley side, touch of purple, or sorry, touch small little dot of blue. Okay, I'm gonna wash this off. Washing it off, squeezing out the extra water. Then drying it pretty well. And I haven't done that purple yet up there, which I will in a minute. But we can start moving down here while it's drying for a little bit longer. And you know, there's other things you can do. You can you can clean up some colors if you want to. If you want to add some more brightness at the bottom, you can go a little bit brighter into that into a salmon or into that uh, magenta color. So if I just add a little bit of white into the same color, I just go back to a touch of red, make that again, a touch of yellow, a little extra dip of red. Remember that salmon looking color? Oops, need a little bit more white. If I put this just along the bottom. Just remember you add a bit more red. Take a little bit of white. You can get into a, a more pinkish pink color. Just going up because I like the lightness that it brings just a little bit down here before it gets into that darker hot pink magenta that we made. It's just a little touch up of a color. So that's something, you know, something to do. And it's really nice to get these colors to your liking before we put trees over top because you can't work around them. Not ideal. Definitely not ideal. So this is the, the yellowy orange. Sometimes when you go over it and you blend over it, you just blend over the colors that you really liked. So I like to go over it. And second coats are optimal for giving it a very, very solid opaque look. 
and more vibrancy. So it looks a little bit deeper in color in that area. I like that orangey color here. It's nice. Okay, washing this off. And now let's just put in some stuff at the bottom before we put the purple at the top. That's the violet color. Squeeze out the extra water again. I'm still using my large brush. I really like it. So one of the colors, I'm just going to pull this up. One of the colors that we want to start with is just more of a violet purpley color. Then we add highlights of um, different other, just other colors, um, kind of pinkish, magenta, similar to what's going on up here. So if you have some of your violet, remember that violet, you add a little bit of white because it's really, really dark. You can see just how dark it was. It actually, in the camera, for some reason, it looks more blue than it really is. I don't know why it does that. It's just the pigment of it. But you can always add a bit more pink to your liking or some red um, to make it from scratch. You only want to take a little bit of blue, so like a pea size, and then a pretty, pretty big chunk of red, almost equal parts, but a little bit heavier on the red. So close to equal parts, but a little extra more red. That's violet, pretty dark. Then when you take a little scoop of white, you can get a light on half of it. You get a lighter purple, and then you have a darker purple on the other side. Let's start with the lighter one first. Start with the lighter one. And what I'm going to do here is we're going to make the hills first. It's more of the mountains. I'm going to switch to my medium flat. So switch to the medium flat for me to get the shape of my mountains. And I'm going to use this to fill it in. So let's see. We're going to now, with our mountains, we got to be careful that we're not going too high up at first because it's actually a little bit lower than halfway. And we used our, our yellow for, for reference. So it just, let's just do something kind of fun. So it's like meeting in the middle, just below where that white is, or um, you can go a little bit higher depending on how much of a peak you want. Just cross that over, then I do a little bit of an overlap. So it's from here, I just kind of overlap it and do maybe a bit of a peak. Mountain come in like that. If we're going to shape them a lot better after we put in our base coat. So let's just take this purple, the violet, as a base coat and just fill that in just like this. So it's going down on that angle. Touch of water. Start on this side. Bring it down this way. It's overlapping towards the other side. And we need a little bit of space on the ground. So you can decide before, once you fill these in, you want to have a line going across and decide if this is enough space at the bottom for the ground. I can, you can easily raise up your hills just a little bit so you always have a little bit more space. You can have a bit more height here. So if I just raise it up a tiny bit more. Doesn't have to be perfect, it can be a little bit bumpy, you know, going through throughout all of it. And I can bring up the line here 
So I just raise up where the ground is going to, where my hills are going to end. And this is done by, um, I'm going to take a little bit of a lighter color here actually. I'm going to go back to more of a magenta or a lighter pink. So if I take a little bit more red and some white into the same color, so a little bit more white, a little bit more red, so you get a lighter pinky purple. We're going to start with that. Go up to where you want the hills or sorry, the mountains are going to end. Now raise it up just a little bit so I have all that space for the shadow of the trees. And just fill it in back and forth just like that. Small touch of water. Just a base coat back and forth. There. This is the bottom. This is my mountains. And we're going to add some layering on top. But in the meantime, we can go back into our sky, finish it up add anything else that we want to add towards the top in terms of colors and just make it to your liking making it your own type of thing um, if you want to put in more of a certain color like if you really love the salmon or coral look you can put in more of that so yeah let's get started on that okay so we are just putting in that purple at the top um, with my very large brush again don't put too much water on it as usual, just make sure it's cleaned off. And then in terms of taking violet, we're not going to just take violet and put it on top. We want to make sure that when it's actually similar to the lighter color down here. So we're going to start off a little bit lighter. Take our little piece size of blue if you need to make more and about equal parts, but a little extra of the red. And then we're going to add in small little touch, sorry, like a, yeah, about this much piece size of white. Alternatively, if you have premixed violet, just add in a little bit of a lighter magenta to it and maybe a little bit more white. So if I take a bit of some magenta and put it into the violet, You can mix that in as well. Okay, so let's start from the very top corner and see how it looks. When we start from the very top corner and just take a small touch of water. You can just very lightly go over it, see how it's looking. And start dragging it down. I like to, when I drag it down, I like to add in either, you can add in your magenta or just a bit more red. A little bit more red and sorry a touch of white as well and just very lightly again bring it in cross you get a little bit less paint on your brush as you bring it down and when you bring it down you can just keep adding a touch more of your red That's white, so it's getting similar to that lighter magenta that we had over here. There, so I don't go too far down. It's mostly into that red spot, the hot pink, and I just put it over top. And it's up to you how much of this purple you really want to add in. Take a step back, see if you like it, see how it's going. And what you can do is um, when you go back to red, that dot of blue to make more of that magenta color, 
I would say if you're making it from scratch, instead of making it with some touch of yellow, I would just add a touch of blue so it's mostly red. And then a little bit of white for that hot pink. And you can just go over it as needed. Washing this off. Just make sure if you have too much purple in there, I'm just washing it off, squeezing out the water. Gets out the extra underneath colors that we don't really need. And yeah, just touch up on the other colors. touch of white you can get it even lighter just a little bit below as we get towards the lighter side okay so as a little recap we just took our we made a violet color where you can take violet add a bit of magenta to it but you take your about equal parts of blue and red, but extra dip of blue, so a bit more of the red, sorry, extra dip of red added into it, so it's more of the red than the blue, and then some, a little bit of white, and you test it out, you can add more white if it's too dark up here. Just very lightly bring it down, and then as we go down, we're just gonna add in more of our red and a bit more white to keep it going lighter and lighter. Um, we're not going over our salmon Remember that magenta salmon color we were making down here? You don't need to go too much into that, but you can go back and put in the colors, like the salmon looking color and um, a, a pinkish kind of purpley color or a pinkish orangey color, depending on if you want more purple or if you want to go more salmon down here. Washing this off and squeezing out the water again. Then, we just let that dry. Let that dry. When it is fully dry, any touch-ups you need to do, you can do it when it's fully dry and you can go over it pretty well. You can also trace around some of your mountains. You can bring down some more of the yellow, just plain yellow if you want to. But now we're gonna focus on getting the shape of our mountains to our liking, a little bit more detail, and some of the snowy bits down here to get that in and then we can focus on our trees. I'm going to be using my flat brush and I'm going to take, let's take some red to start. We can add in a touch of that, whatever leftover violet you have or just the smallest dot of blue. You have to be careful, it's not too much. And then we're going to take in some white because we need to go lighter. Make sure it's more, much more heavier on the red when you mix it. So we're getting into a lighter pinkish with a dot of that purple in, similar to a magenta color up here, but it's much lighter. So it's a softer pink. I'm gonna use this. So what I want to do is just kind of use the flat side and just practice streaking this across a little bit. You can see that most of the light will be coming in from that middle section here. So if I you can use the thin side up here, if it makes it more comfortable for you, just streak it across very lightly. You can also use the flat side a little bit towards the side so it's just not going over your purple too much. It is a little bit more concentrated in the middle, but when you go to the sides, it's a bit more choppy. Something like that. That already makes it look a little bit more, of course, lighter right there. 
All right, let's stick with this color for now. Onto the mountains. I like to use a thin side. Let's go a tiny bit closer. I like to use a little bit of paint, use the thin side of the brush and just lightly streak it. So from the middle, I think I'm gonna decide this is overlapping this mountain. So we have that overlap right here. And I'm just doing some easy streaks where I'm not thinking too hard. I'm just thinking about a general shape within, which is just adding in a bit of layering. So if I put this in front here, I can give it a bit more of some depth and some texture without it following all the way through. Maybe I'll have a little streak from the side here, like as if there's another part of the mountain coming in. So these are more hitting highlights. You can see it's very choppy. It gives it more of that texture. So I'm not making it perfect lines. I like the rough choppy look and that's going to help give it that detail. I'll just use some of the thin side. I'm just going to lightly blob it in towards the bottom and that should do it for the start. Anything you don't like, you just take purple again and go over it. And now as we pull this back, what we want to do is just add in a bit more details in here. So we take a step back, it's going to come together a bit more nicely with the depth. We want to put in some more blue accents on the side and uh, maybe a bit more darker violet at the bottom and also at the bottom of the hills and or mountains, um, some black too and some deeper, deeper violet as well. So just adding on to the color. And I'm using my flat brush still. Flat brush, wash it off. Let's start with, hmm, let's start with some blue because we can easily build off from the, the blue. I'm gonna take my plain blue with a little bit of white so I get just a basic, lighter, it's not too light. So try not to go too light. If you went too light, add in a bit more blue. And I'm going to add in a little dot of red. This is going to help give it that slightly deeper. You can see it's just slightly different. Kind of purpley almost, but it's not really too purple. Then I'm going to just streak it from the side. Just give it a bit of a blue accent over here. You can go all the way across. Just very light. Um, I'm not going to overdo this. So I'll put a bit more on this side. A couple of streaks. And now I'm going to go to more of the violet color. Whereas if you have your violet, great, it's already dark for you. But we're going to take about equal parts of the red and blue again, but with a little extra of the red. Nice and dark. So it kind of looks black here. And I'm just going to go along the bottom. You see it's nice and dark. I just drag it up just a little bit. It's nothing, nothing blended, just a couple little streaks into, you know, into your, just below where you put your little highlights with the lighter pinkish color. Do that, just do that. And streak across. Follow the groove. It's going upwards on an angle for the most part. Gives it a bit more shadow. Pretty great. And at the bottom, a little touch of water, take your violet. Start from the bottom here. And just streak it using the flat side. Try not to press too hard. Press a little bit lighter. So you can get a bit more of that darkness on the very edges here. And we are going to touch up on the lighter stuff. But you can see how it's just engulfing the area. It's darker on the edges. You can go over a little bit of that blue should you want to give it a bit more purpley tone. Cool. So we are touching up on the highlights. Don't worry about that. We're going to get to that soon. 
Let's just wash this off. Wash it off, you can go back to your highlight color. So into this darker violet, add a lot more red, white. You can get pretty much the same or similar color. It's kind of purpley, or you could do different things. Mommy? Just give me a second. <laughs> back <laughs> so going back to that lighter color just to touch up while it's still a bit wet um, just wipe off any you don't need a whole ton of paint on your brush just very lightly coated and you can just touch up on those areas and it gives it a quick little blend so I just take a little bit kind of lightly tap it and just start from the middle and streak it out use the thin side if you if you need to get some more thinner lines and it just blends out some of this darker purple from the middle outwards. And I like the chalky look as well, so nice and streaky is, I think, is pretty cool. A little bit more on, on this side, I try to put a little bit more Wipe off some of the extra paint just in case. Okay. Now, after this, what we're going to do is we're going to put in some more highlights onto the top here, kind of a bit snowy looking. And I still use this brush. We're going to use a dry brush, kind of what we've been using throughout, not too much water at all and very little paint so we can just kind of streak across, get a little swipe of that paint. You can also use um, a palette knife if you want to get even more texture with that to just kind of swipe it across and give it that lifted texture of the paint on, on top for more of a snowy look. So that's always fun. And what I like to do there is I just take a lot more white and let's put it into that same lighter spot, so the same light pinky color. Take a little bit of red, mostly white. You can add a touch of yellow if you like that slightly yellowy looking color in there. So it's almost like, I mean, you add a touch of yellow and I just want to wipe off a little extra paint and just use more of the side and just kind of do that. You can, you can also use a bit of the flat side and go a bit more heavy towards the very top part of it. So I'm not going right over top of the edges where the outline of the, the mountains are. I'm just going just below it, kind of swiping it down using pressing more towards the thicker side and just pressing lighter so that the paint comes off more rough and choppy. It, it adds more texture. And you can just very lightly, if you need to, wipe off some paint, but you can just very lightly add in some on top of already existing spots just to touch up onto it and it gives it a bit more of that snowy look. Personally, if I go a little bit too much, you can see if I just take my violet again and just very lightly go over it, it can help. You can see it just cleans up some, some of those spots. And feel free to take either your premix magenta or your hot pink, and you can put in a little bit more of this color. Just as little extra details, just like around the middle part where it's opening into where it's meeting together in that little V shape. You can see a bit more of the, some colors from the sky reflecting here.
you can add some of this in here a little more. Add in little streaks of magenta down there. That's something. I like to take more of that white. Remember that white that we put up here? I like to add that down here as well. So just into the, the very centers, mostly not on the edges, but down here in the middle. Get that a little bit lighter and into the very middle. If it helps, you can just take plain white. It's supposed to be snowy right here. And anything, any other little touch-ups before we start our trees. We're going to put the shadows from the trees, of course, afterwards. But if you want to put in a bit more, say, red, pinkish colors to show through, some lighter purples, you can add it. Wash off this brush. And if you want to just take a Clean magenta. If you have a premix, you can just put that in. It gives it more of a pinky looking color before it gets into the purple. So that's an option. You can just you can stick with your lighter pinks if you add some red and white. Red, white. You can take a touch of your blue. Red, white, touch of blue. Mostly red. And you still get some of a, a lighter pinky color. Hot pinky color. Only a small, just a little dot of that blue is necessary. So there's different, there's different ways to put in some light pink in here. Personally, I like it when it's brightest just in the middle, below, before it gets into the darker colors. So these colors, can well, you're welcome to put them into your mountains, play around with that. I don't want to, you don't have to do more work than you really need to, but if you want to experiment with it, you want to take some of your, either add more magenta in here, you can add more um, violet, purple, any other purples. If you want to put some more yellow, you can put more highlights of yellow at the very tops. But we want to put in the black that's just sitting at the bottom. It gives it extra contrast. There's some black just down here, which I'm going to now use my same flat brush, but just take straight black. Make sure there's no white on your brush. You wash it off. Clean black. And do a solid line going across the bottom of your mountains. You can see it's pretty thick, but we're just starting with a pretty decent line here. We can go a little bit closer. And what I do is I keep it pretty simple. I just flick it up like this. Like that. Then you can use your detail brush afterwards, or you can use the thin side and just get some of them a little bit taller. You have to be very careful though. You don't just do all the same, but some of them are a little bit taller. Uh, 
Um, the detailed brush is good if you didn't get enough at the beginning with your flat, smaller brush. So you can just go and flick up and pull up the black paint to your liking. And just put a lot of it. It looks more like a foresty feel. Lots of layers of trees and everything in the very far background. So, pretty fun. Nice. There. And then, now we can work on our trees and just I would say use your ruler, use something with a straight edge that you can not have to worry too much about when you're making your trees, you can get a pretty perfect line. You can wait for this to fully dry, you can do this with me. Um, and after the trees, we're going to put the shadows for them down here and put some leaves on top. So we're almost there. Okay, so I'm going to pull this down just a little bit and we're going to make our trees. So we start with black and then we can highlight with brown if you feel like it. Got the ruler. Hopefully you're not smudging paint as you're doing this, but just carefully place it. Um, as you can tell, we do not have trees that are going straight in the middle. We are off to the side just very slightly. So we're going to start right around here on this tree. See, it's we're not doing this, we're going to imagine it's kind of just off to the side from the middle, starting around here and it's just angled in a little bit. Okay, so just want to make sure you're angled in just a little bit. Then we're going to take black. And sorry about the noise, but... Um, Hopefully it's not too bad. So we're going to just take black and just start with this. You're going to press a little bit more and then at the bottom, you can pull this away and do the rest. So a touch of water, black, and now we can make the bottoms just a little bit more flat. So just have it a bit more flat down here. We're going to make it like this, just go up. And mind your trees are not perfect, so you don't have to make a perfectly straight tree altogether. They're generally not like that. So it's all preference too, but make sure it is level and flat at the bottom. So it's sitting on here. So we have basically the start of just the one tree. Okay. So you can keep using your ruler, just work your way out and then do the other side. I'm gonna do another one. Oh uh, yeah, I'm gonna do one like a little space right here. It doesn't have to be the same angle. Or can be more straight upwards. Straight across here. A little bit wider at the bottom. There, so they're, they're not too different on uh, thickness, but there is some thicker ones that are coming, for example, straight from the bottom. So there's one that's coming right from the very bottom corner and it's just going up a little bit on that angle as well. More black. I like to use the thin side first before I start using thicker sides, but press a bit harder. And this one is a little bit thicker because it's closer into the foreground. So it's the very foreground that it's sitting in. So that is something I make thicker compared to the rest of the trees. There. going to, well, let's just do another one right around here. And there we go.
there. I think one more on this side. There's a tree just kind of sitting on the edge that's just coming in. You know, whatever you can fit to. If you run out of space, don't add in trees for the sake of adding it. You can just do less trees overall. Focus on the ones that you got. So the other side. This one, I'm going to place this. Just off to the side, place it right around here. Now we have two in the foreground, just three on this side. So we're going to now make them just a little bit bigger, like I did in the corner down here. We have over here, they're just kind of coming in close to this guy. And then my next one is just off here. Something like that. Then we can focus on uh, the leaves very shortly. But first, let's put in the shadows at the bottom because those are really fun. Make this a little bit thicker. We're going to focus on highlights of the trees, so you want to add some brown um, after we do the shadow down here. Let's take our super dark violet again. So remember the um, equal parts of the blue and red, but a little extra red. Let's do that. You can add a small little touch of white if you don't want it to be ultra, ultra dark. You still want to see a bit of that color. You can put in a little touch of it, and we're going to go right along the bottom here. And you want to, so you can see the angle. See how it's coming down and going out this way? We're not going straight down. See how, and then from the middle, this is where the light is shining. This is going that way. So we're going to make sure that this goes this way, off to the side. So it's going to touch the bottom and streak it off to the side. Point this out this way. This way. This way. So that starts the shadow. And then after this, I will finish up more of the, the shadowing and stuff around it um, after we do some of the leaves and the highlights on the trees. So for the leaves, you can, you can tell they're kind of starting around where the mountains are. They're not really going too much below it. There's a little bit of emptiness down here and then it's filled. So we're going to take our time to fill it in. Um, I'm going to use first this flat brush. And I'm also going to use a combination of my detailed brush. So let me go a bit closer and show you how I do these leaves. Starting with the flat brush, the smaller one. A little bit of water and black paint. I'm going to wipe off the extra water and paint. Just dab it a bit dry. And to get started, 
All we want to do is just lightly tap with the tip. If you get a frayed brush too, start angling it down. You can see when I use the tip, it's not too much with paint. It gets all these dotted little um, textured bits. And if I press a little bit harder, you can see it's more closer together. It's not as stippled like on the side. So there's that way. That's how you can start some of your leaves and just do leaves in general. Um, other ways that you can do this is detailed brush and actually just make, see on, maybe it'll start on like these trees over here. You can start a little bit of a direction of where these lines are going to be. So if I just streak out and hang down some with these weighted leaves just kind of sitting on the edges. And start with that and then dab over top. You can change the angle too. You can change it downwards. You can do straight across if you get if you like certain angles and the different ways that it can look. When you dab over these, it adds leaves on top. It leaves the gaps in between. So I have some going down here. And let's show you a little bit of another way. Um, another way you can do some of these is kind of just like making your branches, those little droopy ones. You can try with your napkin. So if I just take a little bit of a napkin and just very lightly, not fill it all in. It's got a little bit of a gap here. You can just do something like that too. So that is an option. You can experiment with the different textures. see what you like when you're doing this. In the middle seems to have more concentrated leaves here. back and you'll see this will come together this is a napkin and this is not all of my leaves by the way I'm not done I'm just getting it started I like some of the weird textures that come from it. But mostly I enjoy doing the tapping with more of the tip of the brush. I have a bit more control on what it's going to start looking like. See, there's a lot of them kind of concentrated here. They're kind of angled down, just adding that, leaving a little gap. A little gap, add some more, angle them down. Lots of them bunched together, coming from the tree. And you can go as wide out as you want. Didn't go super wide, as you can tell.
And just in case anybody has a fan brush, because I, I know some of us like to use the fan brush wherever possible, not overly coated. You can put in some of these, some of these lines just by kind of like, see, just very lightly. Light little touches, just kind of drooping it down a little bit. On the top, you want to make sure there's some leaves coming from the top as well, and not just stopping. So there's some hanging little leafy branches. Maybe on the side there's um, a tree that we don't really see. Things like lightly tapping. The combination of those dabbings and doing those little lines with your detailed brush or with a fan brush too, you can just lightly tap. Just keep at it, keep filling it in. Just remember to leave some gaps, fill it in more and more um, until you're happy with how much is filled in, but you don't need to work your way down filling in every single little gap, but just build onto it. Fan brush does a really good job at getting this done pretty fast, as you can tell. I'm just doing a lot at once, kind of, kind of nice. side. Going a bit more heavy handed on the bigger trees that I've done that come right to the bottom. A little bit harder. They're not all the same sizes in terms of the leaves. Some of them have some thicker bunches of leaves and branches. I'm not really making the branches, I'm just, it's almost like you're making both at the same time. Combined with those little lines we've made, like as if they are branches, and then dabbing on top to fill them in with leaves. water, a little bit more of that paint, and I'm slowly filling it in. There's a lot filled in between these two big trees, the bigger ones. You notice how they're kind of angling down just ever so slightly with the branches. They kind of hang a little bit lower.
So I'd love to see your different branches and leaves that you've made on your tree. I know there's various ways you can do this. And you've probably found a groove where you prefer a certain way over others. And you can show them on our Facebook page. You can go under groups, support group, or you can you know, message us. We like seeing different interpretations. Very nice. Very nice to see. So I'm going back to this flat brush in case I want to add some more dabs. Probably dive a little bit more into the centers here and there on the bigger trees. So this is a bigger tree. I'll try to just dive a little bit more in here. It's really hard to stop, but when you feel like you have enough, maybe it is a good time to stop. Maybe you feel like, okay, this is good. And you can touch up on little lines. Remember that drooping lines I showed you earlier? That's kind of fun and nice. Detail brush. Use my detail brush just in where it's all kind of bunched together. You can just add little squiggly lines, like those. Remember those drooping lines we sh I showed you to dab around for the leaves. You can add some more on top. And let's put in at the bottom. You can shape around some of your shadows just by taking, remember your any magenta or, or hot pink if you want to shape around it a bit more. Just shape around the tree, trim it up, get it a bit more grounded. And then just get it a bit more shaped, something like that or a lighter pink. I like to take that, remember that white with a little bit of red, some more of a very light pink and just very lightly here. Just touch up onto that. That's just the violet that we had. But if you want to go a little bit more above and beyond, if you have a premixed brown that you'd rather use, you can just use like a burnt umber or a burnt sienna um, to make brown. I'm just gonna use my flat brush. Take some white here. Dirty white is totally fine. And equal parts yellow and red. Just a little bit of white, sorry, I didn't mean to say take a whole bunch of white, just a little tiny, tiny bit. Um, pea size is good, equal parts of red and yellow, about two blobs of that, and then a little pea size of black. You can get a brown color. It's a bit of a lighter brown color. If you want more of a darker one, just keep adding on to red, yellow, and black in here, and it gets darker. So I'm going to use a bit of a lighter brown, you can see it a bit better. 
just going to go right along the side. So the side that's facing where your light is coming from, that's very important. I like to just go along the long, this is a bit, it's hard to tell, just a little bit down here, a couple little streaks coming up. You don't need to go to the top or anything, I just mostly do the bottoms because that's where there's not really any leaves and you would see a little bit more of that detail. Um, detail brush can clean up anything, you can do a little bit more of a defined line if you want it to be really perfect. But black will clean up anything you don't like, so if you just go back in with your black, you can clean up any anything that you don't like. So it's mostly just on the edges. And look at that, it adds some nice 3D look to it with a bit more of those details with the brown. If you really like the brown, you can add light little touches towards the tops. Okay. Um, that should be pretty much the last step. Just looking at this middle part here, like the white. So it depends on how light you really want to go. It's hard to work around trees, so just be careful with that. But yeah, you can always just brighten it up a tiny bit more. And there we go. That's the pink, purple. And now we have our morning glow winter scene. So hopefully that was fun and relaxing, even though there were some wild kids upstairs. <laughs> yes, what can I do? Um, show your results on our Facebook page. We love seeing them. Go to our Facebook page, Artist Palette Durham. Maybe you'll paint along with us again. We have lots of tutorials, so please have fun with it. Take your time. You can watch this on replay over and over again. There's basically no limit, and we will not take it down. Just touching up on my on my mountain detail there. Sign your painting, and hopefully this was easy enough to follow. Yeah, it shouldn't be too hard. Thanks for joining, guys. Bye.